Alright, so here's part one of the Unity 3D tutorial. So I already have it written in C sharp. But I want to recreate it in JavaScript. So maybe a good way to go through the uh, series would be I show you what I have in C sharp and then recreate it in JavaScript. And so that way you'll see the structure of what I'm doing. Um, for JavaScript, you'll see how I'm coding it. But if you want it in C sharp, I have the script there. So if you want it in C sharp, I'll show you the structure. But if you want the specifics for C sharp, because there's a little bit of syntax changes and stuff, then it will be there. Okay, so I think that's a good way to do it. Um, so here I have an empty JavaScript script called grid. As you can see, it's empty. This is just the default. We do want pragma strict on. Um, I'm also going to put pragma downcast. Hold on. I'm just going to get out of this. That's the League of Legends. Someone's messaging me. Okay. Um, right, so I haven't used JavaScript in a while, but you should always put pragma strict and pragma downcast. Uh, JavaScript is pretty easy on you if if you don't type stuff in exactly right. So it's always good to do it like that. So if we play, um, nothing happens, right? Because right here, this is my C sharp grid. I have deactivated, and my JavaScript script, which is empty right now. So first, what we're gonna do is we're going to set up the game and I'll show you what it's going to look like using the C-sharp script I already have. If we press play, what we want is to make a grid of any size. Alright, so this size would, is uh, 9 by 20. Let's say I wanted to make a 5 by 20. I think the camera's going to be a, lot, be a little off for this. Yeah. Uh, but as you can see, it's a 5x5 five five grid. I wanted to do 50 by 3 I don't know why anyone would want that, but 50 by 3 So, we're just going to make a grid of any size. Okay, and this is going to be using a double for loop. But first, before we make the grid, we need to make this prefab. So, I'll move one uh, into the scene. So here it is. This is really simple. It's just a box with four walls. So I'm going to recreate this right now. Um, to make that, I'm going to go to Game Object, Create Other, and then Cube. So we have a cube here. Um, I'm going to make the position 0, 0, 0, instead of whatever it defaults to. This is going to be the floor of the cell. So I want the Y to be pretty small. So you know what? Um, how about we just work with this right now? I'm going to rename this, uh, the prefab that I had before, to something else. I'm going to do Create Prefab in the Project menu. And then I'll write in Sub. So we have a prefab here that's empty. And we have a game object here that we're going to use. So to change the prefab into this cube, or rather make the cube this prefab, I'm going to drag the game object into the prefab. Now if I delete the object in the game, like this, I can drag back in. So this is just like... Um, I don't know how else to say it besides the prefab, but we can design whatever we want and then make it into a prefab and then create that from the script. Alright, so I'm going to delete this one. Okay, so all I've done so far is just create this prefab, right? 
Now we're going to go to our JavaScript script. I keep seeing JavaScript script. And we're going to need some variables. So let me check which ones they are. It's going to be three. Uh, cell prefab, grid size, and buffer. Right now we just need cell prefab, grid size, and actually I think we need this one too. Grid R. Okay. So, um, I haven't done JavaScript in a while, but the format is like this. Public bar cell prefab as type transform. This is going to be our prefab that we just made. Public bar uh, grid size as vector three. Vector threes are uh, x y z's, so you can put x y z all into one variable. Now, um, I'll put in the other one too. Public bar grid r, it's grid array as a two-dimensional array. So um, if you don't know anything about these types, transform, vector 3, or transform, or two-dimensional arrays, um, I'm not going to go over them. So you have to look it up for yourself, all right? Um, if I went over each of these, it would take too long. So then we're going to make this function called create grid. So I'll do it right here. Uh, function create grid. Okay. Now we're going to initialize these variables. Or actually, no. We're going to assign these in the inspector. So Let me zoom this in. Okay, so um, I'm giving myself this little note, um, which is a comment with a star. That's telling me that I'm assigning these variables in the inspector. So inspector is in Unity over here. Um, we have these variables: cell prefab and grid size. Here they are: cell prefab and grid size. So we're going to assign those right now. We'll make the grid size. 5 by 5. Um, now cell prefab, I'm going to drag in that prefab that we have right in there. Right. So first let's not even create the grid. Let's just do uh, instantiation. So uh, we're going to be using the function instantiate. And it's going to take in three variables, uh, the prefab, the position, and the rotation. So the prefab is going to be cell prefab, which is the thing we worked on. The position, um, actually, you know what? Let's start really simple. We can do instantiate with only cell prefab, uh, only one variable. So we look through the script. We have this assigned, this is our prefab, that little cube, and then when the script starts, it's going to instantiate or create a cell prefab. So if we start the game, you can see that we have no cells in here, but when we start, one appears. And there it is. It's named cell clone, and it's made when we start. So you can see we start the game and it's there. We end the game and it's no longer there. So um, the benefits of doing this way in code rather than just putting uh, cells in the game like this is let's say we wanted to make a 50 by 50 grid of these cells. I could keep adding this prefab in and changing the positions myself. However, this would take a really long time. Um, 50 by 50 is what? Um, 2,500? 